Welcome back to Q Dads. It's me, Steve, and I'm here with episode 5 of From. And before we even dig into it, let's just take a moment for Dale. I mean, he's one of those characters that we're not really bothered if he dies, but geez, no one deserves that ending. Being taken into a faraway tree and straight into a wall, that was brutal. And, of course, we're going to be discussing that moment in just a minute, as well as a few others, including a nice theory that stems around Julian Elgin. But as always, before we do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, because we're only a few weeks away now from Silo, which is when we jump back onto the sci-fi train. Now, just before we dig in, this is a public service announcement for the missing puppet Jasper, who only got a name drop and location this episode. Clearly, the producers didn't want to give us any information out of him this week. Here's hoping for next week, though. Anyway, let's get into it. So, the episode ends, of course, with Dale being taken through a faraway tree and embedded into a concrete wall of the pool for the motel, which, as all of us and Henry pointed out, there's a sign for, but yet, no motel. Now, of course, we expected Dale to die in this episode most likely being stuck in a well like Boyd did, or falling from the sky as Victor alludes to in previous episodes, but not quite embedded into a wall. Which makes us ask the question, where do these faraway trees lead? Do they lead to specific points? And depending on potentially the time of day that you enter, take you to a different location? Or are the faraway trees controlled by the town itself and the entities that lie within? Because we have to ask ourselves why Boyd went through a tree and ended up in a well, and yet Tabby went through a tree and ended up in front of the lighthouse, as well as Julie, Victor and Sarah all surviving their journeys through a faraway tree. The big question here though, if you cast your mind back, I'm sure Victor says the bottle tree is special and always takes you to the same place, which we now know is wrong. However, is he also right? But... Does the bottle tree only work for the Chosen, like Miranda and Tabitha? If Tabitha was to enter again, would she go to the lighthouse? Not only that, what would happen if Jade entered? As we've alluded to many times, we think Jade is potentially a counter to Tabitha. So, if he was to enter the tree, would he also get to go to the lighthouse? Or maybe somewhere else? Maybe to the entity that's using him? Also... This hole going through the trees gives me a great theory on the monsters, so stick with me till the end and I'll explain. Now, back onto the trees for a second, and how their locations seem random. We also have to take into consideration the numbers that are left within the bottles, which is a strange thing, because if a resident of a previous town had left bottles in the tree, they would more likely have been love notes to their family, or clues and warnings to the residents that are there now. But... Now, as we said before, this show follows similar plot points to Lost, meaning that the series of From is now all about the numbers, which one person could probably be responsible for and has no idea why. I see you in another life, brother. So, what do these numbers mean? Jade reads out one of the numbers, 2659, and he mentions that all of them were four digit numbers. So, could this be a date? And if we take the Americanized date for a moment, being the 6th of February, 59, is this the birth date of one of the residents that holds a key to it all? Or could it be something connected to the post office where Boyd resides? Could 2659 be a combination to a locker or poster box that needs investigating? Do they represent letters within the alphabet or some kind of coordinates? A location or even years dotted throughout time? Maybe the 6th of February 1959 was one of the earlier times where the residents tried to save the children, but haven't. Now, of course, I still want to talk about Julian Elgin getting high and heading to the basement of the house, where they seem to find a box of treasures that were all items that seem to have been collected over time as they gear up in some kind of 80s vibe and start taking photos. This leaves me with two points to make. So, the first being that with them taking photos on this camera, were there any photos stored within the boxes that could contain clues to the origin of the town? This scene did have a very eerie feeling to it too, 
So I did wonder if we were going to take a photo and maybe the woman in the Camino would show up in the background of one of the photos. But it did feel like someone was watching these two, similar to how Fromville Entities watch Boyd. She did mention that she heard continuous screaming. Is this the reason why? Because some of the entities are watching her every move. But most importantly, the second being a theory that I've touched on before, and that is possession or a Horcrux-like theory, which is where certain items of clothing belong to that of the monsters, and to eradicate the monsters, you need to destroy the item of clothing. Now, we've mentioned this before when we saw some of the people enter the caves, and we see that suitcase which has a wedding dress inside, which seems to connect directly back to the monster that we have previously seen. Some of these items of clothing did look familiar, and I do wonder if not all of them, but one of them is lurking within the chest, connecting to a monster. Now, let's of course give a quick shout out to Victor and his dad, who are finally reunited, which was actually a nice heartwarming moment, especially after these seasons of following Jasper's journey. But, as I previously predicted, this is it now. Victor's story arc has been completed. He has been reunited with his father and come to terms with the loss of lots of things over the years. So I'm sticking to my theory that this season we are going to see the death of Victor. And is that something that could be connected to the faraway trees where Victor thinks because he has the most experience and connection with the town that if he enters he will be brought home but in fact suffers a similar fate to Dale. Either way, this part of the episode just felt too happy. There were scenes in the episode this week where it felt too happy. We've not had those scenes in From for a while. And because of that, I genuinely think something big is about to happen. Now, for that monster theory I mentioned earlier. Now, was Tabitha escaping part of the Entity's plan? As she was pulled back into Fromville rather quickly. Again, this starts to play on hope, as the residents of Fromville now have a lot of hope, as they now know someone actually escaped. So let me explain. At the end of the episode, Dale is clearly merged into the wall. Now, I say merged, but did he just displace part of the wall? As clearly, he is still alive for a few minutes, whereas if he'd been merged directly with the wall, I assume he would have died instantly. Ben did say though this could just be the producers showing you how bad this scene was. But I still hope they dig his body out next episode so we can see which of us is right. So here's where the theory comes in. Could the monsters have been people who went through the faraway trees? Now it's speculated they might have once been humans and we said that Fromville seems to happen time and time again in cycles. Could someone else have escaped before? Could this then have given the people hope to go into the trees? I think that's highly likely. And, as Victor said, these trees can go anywhere. Could some of the residents have been merged with something else? Hence the decay in their bodies, as two things become one. And, as we see more and more people safely use the trees, they become even more alluring to use. And surely it's not impossible that some people might have accidentally used them when running away from things in Fromville. So let me know your thoughts on that potential monster origin. Right, let's head over to something I'm not quite sure what to make of. When Boyd is looking on the coach, he sees the head that Randall was carving, and I think it's clear now this head is definitely a replica of the ones from the settlement. So, what did Randall see? We speculate that Randall is left alive, so the town starts to panic, And maybe one, use the faraway trees, or two, go against Boyd and get themselves killed in other ways. But what if the monsters are not allowed to kill Randall? Maybe those cursed are to be spared, as it does seem weird that Randall is alive. Not only that, but making the head, and he was still seeing the cicadas when the monsters were circling him. Not only that, it did look like Boyd picked up Randall's notebook as well. Are we going to be seeing the inside of that book next week? Maybe Randall knows what the entity stalking the settlement is, as clearly Kenny thinks it's something different to the monsters. Let us know your theories on Randall. And of course, before we end and pass over to you guys, we've got a touch on Fatima. 
because Fatima ended up telling Ellis about the fact that she, all she can eat is rotting food. Where will this lead in the next episode? Because now he knows full well that if he tells, Boyd is going to do something a little bit more drastic now. Is that what the monsters want? Or is this the thing that will eventually break Boyd and call back to a theory we had where Boyd will have to make the ultimate decision of potentially hurting Fatima and the child? Of course, let us know in the comments your thoughts on the episode. For us, it was a little bit slower and somewhat of a filler episode for the season, but the ending was really good. And obviously, and the number thing has got all of our brains rattling with some crazy mathematicians on Reddit if you head over there. But what do you think the numbers represent? Do you think Randall is about to become some kind of antagonist or maybe even a monster? Will we ever get back to the tunnels to find Jasper? And finally, do you think we'll see Jade entering one of the faraway trees anytime soon? Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it helps the channel to grow. And as always, we'll catch you next time with something new.